going to get a sample of water um, to do our pH test. down on the ground here to do this. So I want to fill my test tube up to the gray line. I'm going to add seven drops of the wide range indicator. This will tell us the pH of the water. And that basically shows us how acidic or basic the water is. We like for our water to have some acid, but not too much. We're going to add seven drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll put my cap on and mix. Now you can see the water's turned light green. This doesn't tell us anything yet, so we're going to use our code box to tell us the pH of the water. So I can tell that my water is green. I'm, I'm trying to match it with these colors. So I want to put it on the side closest to the green, and we're going to let some light through. And which one do you think it's closest to? 7, 7.5, 8, or 8.5? I think it's closest to 8, maybe even in between 8 and 8.5. So we can say the pH of our water is about 8. We'll use our chart to tell us what range we're in. If we look at our pH chart, 0 to 6 is in a 4 range, and then 9 and up is a 4 range. So 8, we're right here in this good range. So the pH level of our water today is great.
So here we are at Falls Branch. This is a tributary of Elklick Creek. Uh, we've been sampling macroinvertebrates in this site since 1997 to get a better idea of the water quality here in our watershed. Uh, we sample for macroinvertebrates because they are bioindicators, and so um, that means they are telling us uh, something um, about the environment and about the health of the environment. Um, the macroinvertebrates that we have here, oh, well, they're called macroinvertebrates because they are large. You can see them with the naked eye. They're not huge, but, um, and they're invertebrates, um, so they don't have, which means they don't have a backbone. Um, the macroinvertebrates that we have here, some are going to be very sensitive to pollution and low oxygen levels, uh, which, and those are, if we see those, then that means that our water is clean and healthy. Uh, there are going to be some macroinvertebrates that are very tolerant of pollution and low oxygen levels. If we see those, it doesn't necessarily mean that our water is unclean or unhealthy. Um, it just means that uh, they're also here too. So we want to see basically a, a good diversity. We want to see the good indicators. Um, um, and have those maybe in a higher proportion than the ones that are uh, more tolerant of pollution. Um, so um, the way we sample is we grab a net and we have our volunteer, um, Dan, who's been helping me today. So, and we go to sites that are called riffles. And so if you look in the stream, you'll notice that there are rocks of um, stones of many sizes that create these riffles. And then below those rocks is some finer substrate. Um, and so we put that net into uh, the middle of a riffle and then we stir things up uh, to kind of dislodge the macroinvertebrates that would be kind of hiding under the rocks or sometimes some of them even create habitats on the rocks or cling to the rocks. And so by stirring up uh, that habitat, um, then we loosen those macroinvertebrates up and then they get into the net. Um, and the macroinvertebrates that we have here, you see that there are a lot of leaves um, in the creek here. Uh, and those leaves provide uh, food for these critters. And so there are some that are called shredders that break down the leaves. Um, and there are collectors that will feed on some of the more finer particulate matter um, and some of the algae. Um, and the grazers will do that as well. And then um, we've got the uh, predators, which would be like the, the, the crayfish. Um, so we have a diversity of things here that we have found today. So we'll start with the things that are good indicators. So that would be like the stone fly here that Dan just put into the tray. So we have the stone flies have two tails here at the end um, and very sort of bold um, segments uh, on their body. And of course, six legs like other insects. We've got a, a few stone flies that we found. And then we have a few different species of caddisflies. So these orange ones with the dark red heads, that is a type of caddisfly. We have, um, there are some green ones in here. That I'm suddenly not finding as easily as I was before. Um, but there are definitely, I think, at least three different kinds of um, caddisflies uh, that are in here. So the stoneflies and the caddisflies are really good indicators of water quality and we found a few of each so that's really good. Uh, we also have um, the Dobson flies and you see they have little pinchers here on their heads um, so those are kind of what would be considered more of the predators. Um, we just we just saw one a little bit ago um, going after one of the caddis flies. Uh, we've got um, here the little, little crayfish. We've got a few little tiny crayfish in here that we also found and they're in the predator category. Uh, what else? And we have a water penny. So water pennies are very strange. These are actually uh, larval um, beetles. They don't look anything like a beetle right now, um, but they, you know, kind of just cling to the rocks um, and kind of feed on very fine matter. And what else do we have in here that I'm missing? Oh, we have the scuds. So the scuds, they kind of move a little bit like shrimp. Uh, those are going to be one of the ones that are more tolerant of pollution, um, but, you know, they like to kind of hide, especially where we have, like, the tree roots um, kind of coming in uh, to the creek. They'll hang out in those roots. And then we also have, where are, oh, right here. This one here is called an isopod, so it kind of looks like a roly-poly. So isopods are also going to be very tolerant of pollution, but they're also very common where we have limestone. And we have a lot of limestone here, so we tend to have a lot of isopods. But because we see um, a good diversity here and see those good indicators, um, then we feel pretty good about um, the health of our stream. 
Another thing that we found here is a larval salamander. So these are not macroinvertebrates, um, but they are part of the aquatic ecosystem. Um, so they may be feeding on some of the um, invertebrates that we see here, um, but um, they you know, develop in the water and then some species uh, would be more um, uh, amphibious as adults where they'll be partly on land and partly um, in the water. There's that one clam shell. Oh yeah, yep. We also have a little clam here. This is a little Asian clam, so it's a non-native. Um, so those are actually pretty abundant um, in our waterways here. Anything else you can think of? Well, I would also make the contrast between direct quality sampling, which you all did down there, where you're getting an instantaneous picture of the water quality. This is indirect water quality testing, but in my personal opinion, this is more valuable because these organisms are showing us that the water quality is of a certain um, level over time. It's not just this minute that it's clean, but it's been clean for a long time or these organisms wouldn't be so common here. Right. Class, you know, they're talking about the cycling of matter. So for the macros, the leaf litter is very important. And for the aquatic ecosystem, that's really important, right? Because they're helping decomp with decomposition and then they're providing food for things that might eat them. Exactly. So, so it, they're that, that connection piece. And yeah. most of these, not all of them, but m many of these are actually the aquatic larva of organisms that are going to be out. Okay. Um, Beverly was saying that there's a, a scientist coming out tonight to sample the flies that are being born from these mm -hmm. larvae. Okay. And so they also are feeding, you know, the migrating birds or resident okay. birds. Mm -hmm. uh, they're very important on land as well as in the water. So yeah. it's important that our streams stay good so that it can support all of these different levels of life. Yeah, yeah, the fish are very dependent um, on these for food. And there's also uh, a breeding bird we have here called the Louisiana water thrush that feed almost exclusively on uh, the stream macroinvertebrates uh, while they're raising their young. So, and then of course we also have river otters and other things in the creek that then feed on the fish. So it's uh, we're definitely an important part of the nutrient cycling and the food web um, of our aquatic system. And Flora Cliff has done extensive work doing the biodiversity here. Mm -hmm. And Beverly was saying there's how many different kinds of caddisflies? 39 species of caddisflies have been documented in Elklet Creek. Um, and from what I've been told, considering that Elklet Creek is a small watershed, that that's a pretty impressive number.